Greetings, beautiful people. Welcome or welcome back to Earth's Medicine, where we explore the healing wonders of Mother Earth with a Jamaican flavor. If you're new here and you like to learn about the medicinal uses of plants that grow in Jamaica, then consider subscribing. I mean, it's totally free. And turn on your post notifications so you don't miss our next upload. In today's video, we're going to be exploring the medicinal wonders hidden behind the vibrant blooms and leaves of Silosia, a plant that serves as one of nature's pharmacies. So without further delay, let's get straight into the video. Okay, so the Silosia genus is well known and the plants from this genus are widely used as ornamental plants. Silosia is a part of the Amarantha CE plant family. And if you're familiar with the plant that's on your screen right now, which is a plant that we Jamaicans commonly refer to as pustil, it's also a part of this family. Now, apart from Silosia's ornamental use, the young leaves and shoots are eaten as a vegetable in some cultures. So usually people from parts of Africa and Asia steam them or they use them in soups and stews. People from various cultures also use Silosia in folklore medicine. Now, the exact origin of Silosia growing in the wild is unknown, but some people believe that they originate from tropical Africa and that, you know, it was spread by humans to other tropical and subtropical areas around the world. Now, Silosia is very diverse, so it has many different species of plants. Some people report that there are about 60 different species within the Amarantha CE plant family but it can be broken down into three main types of Silosia which are Silosia argenti var spicata which you are looking at right now there's also Silosia argenti var cristata which is this plant and also Silosia var plumosa which is this plant Silosia argenti spicata is commonly referred to as silver coxcomb and wheat silosia, among other common names. Here in Jamaica, we call it coxcomb and it can be seen growing wildly and organically along roadsides, in people's yards and in other green spaces. Within this group, there are several varieties. This is another variety within the group. And like I was saying, there are others. Wheat silosia looks similar to wheat because as you can see it has cylindrical flowers that form long slender spikes. I'm guessing that this is probably the reason why it was called wheat silosia. The leaves are alternately arranged on the stems and they are medium to dark green in color and they may also be mottled or tinged with burgundy. When the plant is young the leaves are mottled or tinged with burgundy. And older plants tend to have mottled or tinged leaves at the bottom of the plant. The flowers come in different colors of red, pink, purple, or bicolored, and it can grow up to three feet tall or more. The parts of the plant that are used to make medicine are the whole plant, leaves, roots, seeds, and flowers. The flowers and seeds are parasiticide, meaning that they can destroy certain parasites. The plant is useful against trichomonas, which is a type of parasite. The flowers and seeds are also astringent and hemostatic, meaning that they can stop bleeding. They are also ophthalmic, meaning that they can be used for eye problems. People use the plant to help with things like bloody stools, hemorrhoid bleeding, uterine bleeding, leukorrhea, high blood pressure, bloodshot eyes, blurry vision, and also cataracts. The leaves and seeds are used for dysentery, diarrhea, and acute abdominal pain. People also use the leaves for infected sores, wounds, and skin eruptions. The whole plant is used for snake bites, and the roots are used for colic, gonorrhea, and eczema. In India, people use the seeds to help with diabetes. 
The seeds have antibacterial properties and can stop the growth of Pseudomonas, which is a type of bacteria that can cause infections in humans. People who are recovering from a serious illness or injury also use the leaf and flower extract to wash their bodies. Celosio can cause the pupils to dilate, so it's not recommended for persons who have glaucoma. That's it for now guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.